Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. BASF this week announced 232 job losses in Paisley in my constituency. That's almost two-thirds of the remaining jobs at the former SEBA plant, which will now go over the next three years. Proof positive that the recession is not over. Last September, the Cabinet Secretary, in his budget statement, told Parliament that he had reluctantly decided to cancel the Glasgow Airport Rail Link project, which, of course, is also in my constituency. Since the Scottish Government took the Garl decision, it has benefited from two unexpected cash windfalls, £23 million in the pre-budget report and £82 million in the March budget, although in fairness only £76 million of that was available uh, to spend through the Dell budget. And whilst I welcome that the vast majority of that money is going to capital projects, I have to press the government on why they didn't look again at restoring Garrel. With a £100 million windfall since the September cancellation decision, why is it chosen not to revive Garrel? Garrel, after all, is not a new project, as some of the projects we've seen today are, but it is the only ever Parliament-approved capital project to be cancelled mid-construction. If it was reluctantly cancelled, why, with £100 million extra since September, has it not been reinstated? Can I, Deputy Presiding Officer, just on that, raise an important procedural issue? I asked Spice, at my request, to speak to the Scottish Government at lunchtime and ask when the decision would be made about how the £76 million uh, allocated in the budget would be uh, made public. The Scottish Government officials replied to Spice not until October this year in the budget revisions. Given that, I would be grateful if the Cabinet Secretary would look at the accuracy and the courtesy of that response to Spice and to Parliament. But let me return to the substantive decision, which is why Garl deserved reinstatement. It is uniquely a project estimated to be worth 1,300 jobs in the future. The Scottish, 20 years. The Scottish Government has never, ever questioned the accuracy of this 1,300 job creation figure. Spice told me that the figure of 1,300 jobs to be created in Glasgow and Renfrewshire over a 20-year period by the GAL project comes from an assessment of the wider economic benefits by Roger Tim and partners in June 2005 and that this study is at this moment still on the Transport Scotland website, suggesting that it is considered by Transport Scotland and the government to be a robust piece of work. SPICE are not aware of the government at any time questioning the accuracy of this estimated 1,300 jobs that have now been lost. So the long-term job creation potential reflects the fact that Garrel, unlike other projects, is closely linked with major investment plans in the private sector. As many in the Chamber will know, BEA had associated investment of 80 to 100 million pounds planned at the airport, and there were spin-off jobs in leisure and commerce and other projects that will not now go ahead. So the axing of Garrel has uniquely destroyed some major job creation benefits. And we do have to ask, why has it uniquely not been reinstated when John Swinney himself, in the foreword to the current national planning framework, identifies Garl as a transport project of national importance, meriting early implementation? Does he believe that any longer? We don't know. It is an inconvenient truth that Mr Stevenson, who's joined us, himself also confirmed that Garl had a better return on investment capital with a higher cost-to-benefit ratio than many other multi-billion pound now authorised projects. And the government have also made clear in their words and actions that they are simply not interested in looking at the independent engineering consultancy work, looking at the ways to reduce costs and deliver this project and produce an even higher benefit-to-cost ratio. 
I simply say we know that the government didn't want to know when Network Rail volunteered assistance to allow this project with a uniquely high job potential creation to go ahead. I'm happy to take an intervention. Stuart Stevenson, briefly. I, I, I wonder if the member would care to comment on the column to the left uh, in the manifesto that the Labour Party has put forward for the imminent election where the commitment to high-speed rail and all the benefits to Scotland, the whole of Scotland, has been downgraded to merely doing a report into the benefits that might accrue from that, a report which has already been submitted by this government. I Wendy Alexander. It is indeed a matter of no relevance. I am into my uh, final half minute. The issue is, why is a project that has uniquely in the 10-year history of this Parliament been cancelled mid-construction and has a unique job potential creation, vastly exceeding many other projects that have been prioritised, not been reinstated given the £100 million windfall since its cancellation? I simply say to the Government, Every single business organisation in Scotland have called for this decision to be reversed. Every single major business organisation in Scotland. If the government would engage in a dialogue for progress, then the desired rail link involving the stakeholders, the business community, the rail network, would be able to deliver those 1,300 jobs up, that my own constituency, having lost a further 250 jobs this week, so desperately needs. And getting involved in that dialogue, leading it rather than hiding from it, is the responsibility of this government. Rob Gibson.